Es gibt Naturwissenschaftler, die versuchen oder einen Großteil der Naturwissenschaftler. A large proportion of scientists are trying to work within the methodological framework. That is, they argue imminently within this world. But they encounter questions which finally go beyond science, such as with regard to the Big Bang theory. Soon questions arise like, where does the Big Bang come from? Who triggered the Big Bang? And so on. You can remain in the framework of science, but you need to keep in mind that natural science is actually not adequate to really describe questions about the beginning and formulate them. For even if a preceding field, a so-called inflation field, is assumed as an explanation, as was attempted, at once another question arises. Where does this field come from? Where does the energy of this field come from? Where did the laws governing this field come from? If this can be answered, maybe by means of another field, the next question arises. Where does this field come from? That means science can only continue to ask in a kind of infinite regression, but will never be able to go back to the actual beginning. What is formulated in the Christian account of creation, that God has brought our world from not being into being, can't be the object of scientific inquiry. Science starts only where there's something to observe, where there's already a set order and laws. This is usually obscured by statements, such as by Stephen Hawking, that the world came about from the nothing, which sounds a bit like the Christian creation account, but we need to be clear that scientists speak rather loosely here. The nothing is not the philosophical nothing, but by nothing, scientists understand the vacuum. And it has to be noted that vacuum is not any more what it used to be, space free of matter, but it contains fields. Fields have energy, conform to law like properties, and therefore vacuum is very different from nothing. And we ought to actually continue to ask, where does this vacuum come from? This can be continued scientifically step by step, but we will never be able to formulate an actual beginning. In general, it could be said that the natural sciences are undetermined due to their methodology. They can't give answers to all questions which they trigger. The very amazement following our observations excites deeper questions, questions about beginning and end, and here scientists can give very limited answers. It's obvious, justified and legitimate to embed the limited statements of science into a world view, a view of the whole. Here we realize that this embedding can be achieved in very different world views. Science can be embedded into atheism, even though certain questions might have to be suppressed. It can be embedded in agnosticism, as I see it with many colleagues. That is, I won't bother to ask beyond my observations. I set aside the questions which I can't answer experimentally. Or I can embed science into the Christian faith, where I receive statements concerning the beginning that the designer is the Christian God, who intended that life came about, who wanted that we human beings live. For this purpose, the laws of nature and their immutability are indispensable. They can be expressed in formula. Das Leben entsteht, der wollte, dass wir leben können. Die Mathematik ist eine Strukturwissenschaft. Mathematics is a structural science which can formulate very precisely how things are correlated and how they behave in space and time. Also wir können von daher als Naturwissenschaftler As scientists, we can often say with high precision how a stone is going to fall, how fast, in which trajectory how waves propagate, how cell metabolism works. This is the actual core competency of science. 
In this perspective, other aspects are left open, of course, aspects which arouse our interest. Science cannot, in a deeper sense, explain the very why. This was already known to Newton when he devised the law of gravity. He commented very frankly, I can tell you how gravity works, how it depends on distance, but I can't tell you why gravity exists. Aber kann euch nicht sagen, warum es Schwerkraft gibt. Es gibt weitere Bereiche. There are further issues. As scientists, we can't say anything about purposes, about goals, even though in biology, language is sometimes put very goal-oriented. But in fact, we can't determine the end to which something serves. We can say how it is and how it works. This is quite a lot already and corresponds to what engineers need to know. Scientifically, we can't say anything regarding aesthetic aspects. To give a rather peculiar example, Einstein was once asked about this and responded plainly. Of course, you can record Beethoven's Ninth Symphony as a sound pressure curve, but the question, whether this concerto excites me or whether I consider it beautiful or not, these aspects cannot be covered by the scientific method. While we can and should contribute to solve ethical questions via expertise and risk analysis, ethical questions must finally be answered on the basis of an anthropology that is, with regard to nuclear power or gene technology. Do I want to expose a group of people to this? Behind the answer is a certain anthropology, which is not a scientific issue. We can say something about threats, but whether the threat is acceptable or not is not an issue of science. Correspondingly, questions of meaning and destiny we can observe the cosmic development, how it develops, how the elements have come about, but what its destiny is, what its purpose serves, whether there is a designer, a creator, all these are questions we can't capture with our methodology. The more it is legitimate and acceptable to embed this into a compromising view of the world, while the question of how they fit together has to be clarified in each case. Scientists have agreed that God may not be a factor in their theories, especially if we have certain gaps in our theories, gaps in our understanding. In this case, it should not be allowed to bring God in as an explanatory factor. To conduct science in this way is also accepted among Christians. This is rooted in the early days of modern sciences, when due to religious wars, it was very difficult to communicate without beating each other's head. So it was agreed that the metaphysical questions and the question about God should be excluded. This is not to negate it, claiming that there is no God, but to set the God question aside and not to attempt to use God as an explanatory factor in science, that is, introduce him as one factor among others. This method was very successful and was applied by Christians, even by Newton himself. But it has tempted scientists again and again into concluding, if we can do scientific work without God, then there might well be no God. This, however, is a trespassing of methodological boundaries, which has been done again and again until today. It's easy to understand that a method that excludes God from the beginning can't make any statement about God, neither positive nor negative. Certainly this is the reason why the success of methodological atheism leads some people into a dogmatic atheism claiming, in science we can do well without God, so he doesn't exist at all. But this is a trespassing of methodological boundaries, which logically is not allowed. Aber das ist eine methodische Grenzüberschreitung, die, die logisch so nicht erlaubt ist. Naturgesetze äh, sind... Natural laws are postscripts of what we observe, simple regularities, 
And as an atheistic scientist, I would say, okay, I'm content with this. I observe these regularities and I simply leave open the questions about the ultimate cause of this dynamic. I can observe this, I can work with it. I can give instructions to engineers by this, how in this world they should work and construct. I content myself with this. In spite of the exciting successes of cosmology, there remain still unsolved questions, such as the questions on dark matter and dark energy. In my view, the point is very important, that I personally can live with open questions. It can be observed also among Christians that there is nearly an addiction, an urgent drive to end up with a complete smooth view of the world, that all details are known as good as possible. Fast die Sucht oder das drängende Bemühen, nur in ein vollkommen abgerundetes Weltbild zu bekommen, dass man alle Details möglichst gut weiß. In my opinion, neither science nor the biblical scriptures give us complete information about all details, and especially a Christian who is not dependent on a materialistic view of the world, which has been changing at times and again, but who is dependent on God and trusts Him, he can afford more than anyone else to leave certain questions unanswered and to wait with a certain relaxation about how these questions will successively be answered. Or maybe to equanimously make one's own contributions in one or another question to advance research, but not being thrown off track, if again a more or less dramatic change in science takes place. In my opinion, there is a certain opportunity in this fact that as a Christian I am not forced to know every detail about the past or the future.